Hello everyone, Mr. Dominic is my name, math is my game. Today I'm joined with my first period algebra two class. If you didn't notice the date, it's, it's the Friday the 13th. It's a full moon. There's, in our school today, prom is tonight. The PTC track meet day two is tonight. Uh, there's a zoo field trip today. Quite a crazy day. Lord help us. Anyway, last night's homework exercises, um, you might not have been able to answer the first three questions. Why? Because I didn't tell you the two forms. Y equals A times B. Whoa, my smart board's going to have one of those Friday the 13th kind of moments. Y equals A times B to the X minus H plus K. That form is like a form that tells us H translates the graph to the right or to the left. Uh, K translates the graph up or down. But parent function form, parent function form, parent function form is that same form as above, just without the H and without the K. So in other words, it's Y equals A times B to the power X. That's parent function form. So once we have a look at that, I think number one and number two and number three will be really easy to answer. And if we're looking it up on our phones, I'll have the phone till the end of the day. Um, so back to number one. Number one is in parent function form. It is in parent function form. Y equals five times three to the X. Number one, you didn't have to do anything to that. Number two, uh, we got that minus three, that X minus three. Uh, you're going to need to get rid of that X minus three. Okay. So number two is going to be Y equals seven to the X. Y equals seven to the X. Number three, we need to get rid of the minus two and the plus nine. So we're going to have Y equals six to the X. And that's it. How's everybody doing so far? Questions? Comments? Concerns? Okay. Uh, number four asked us to graph. Um, oh, you guys have graph paper on yours. Mine doesn't have graph paper. So I'm going to need to bring in my, um, my graph paper for these two. Okay. Number four, if I go to graph that... My A value is 1, so the graph goes to the point 0, 1. My B value is 4, which tells me I've got exponential growth happening. Uh, I said make a table for these. If we pick an X value of 1, 4 to the first is going to be 4, so the graph will go through 1, 4. I think that's 1, 4. Looks close enough. Um, if I plugged in a 2, it's not even going to fit on the graph. If I plug in a negative 1, it's going to give me 1 fourth. So right off the bat, I kind of get an idea that this is growing really fast. Um, and on the left end of mine, I kind of had the graph turning back up. It does not turn back up. I don't know if you, you catch that or not. It doesn't turn back up. So there's number 4. Um, Y-intercept of 0, 1 goes to the point 1, 4, goes to the point negative 1, 1 fourth. On Monday's quiz... On the graphs, I do expect you to have the y-intercept and a point on either side of it. And I might or might not ask you for the domain and the range. Questions? Yeah. On Monday's quiz, you will be allowed to use a calculator. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good question. Any other questions? Okay. Well, moving right along to number five. Um, number five, I don't know if this is going to let me lock that in place or not. I think the mothership is, is having some kind of effect on this. Anyway, um. My y-intercept is a half, because my a value is a half. Uh, that's kind of unusual, isn't it? That my y-intercept is a half. Um, 
if I plugged in one, I'd have a half times two. Anybody know what a half times two is? A half times two is one. So the graph's going to go through the point one, one. If I plugged in two, I would have a half times two squared, which is a half times four, which is two. This graph goes to the point two, two. Kind of weird. If I plugged in a three, I'd have a half times two cubed, which would be a half times eight, which would be four. So this graph goes to the point three, four. And if I plugged in a four, I would have a half times two to the fourth, which would be a half times 16, which would be eight. So this graph goes to the point four, eight. So I think now we kind of have an idea. Now I did say that I'd like a point on the left of the y-intercept as well. A half times two to the negative first would not be negative. A half times two to the negative first would be a half times a half, which would be a fourth. Okay, so again we have exponential growth. Um, again, you would be allowed to use the calculator on Monday's quiz. Uh, the domain of that, just so you know, is all real numbers. Negative to positive infinity, parentheses on those. The range on both of these is from zero to infinity, parentheses on the zero. Questions about the first four? Pretty easy so far, right? Okay. Well, if we have a look at the next one, it says identify each function as either being a compression. If you've forgotten what a compression is, a compression is where some constant that's multiplying the function, and in this case it would be the, the a value, we'd be looking for an a value between 0 and 1. And actually, it could be positive or it could be negative, but it would be some kind of a value between 0 and 1, some kind of fractional value of a. Uh, reflection is when we have um, the function kind of being multiplied by something negative. A reflection, you remember, is when we take like a parabola and, and make it uh, go on the other side of the uh, y-axis. So... Um, so that's usually when we have a negative in front of the function. Um, and then a translation is just when we move it to the right or to the left, when we translate the function to the right or to the left. So, so number six, are A values one or B values two in both functions? So I don't think it's a reflection. I don't think it's a compression. But in, in the one function we have 2 to the x, the other one we have 2 to the quantity x minus 1. So that one is a uh, translation. So number 6 is a translation. More specifically, it's a translation to the right one unit. So far so good? Okay. Uh, number 7. Number 7, there's no thing being added to the x or subtracted from the x. And there's nothing being added or subtracted to the end. So 7's not a translation. Uh, I don't see anything going across the x-axis, so I don't think it's a reflection either. Compression? Okay. So 7 is a compression because of this a value here. 7 is a compression. Compression? By a factor of 3 fourths or 0.75 if you like. Number eight, it's not translated to the right or to the left. It's not translated up or down. You're thinking, but the one opens up and the other one opens down. You're right. What's going on in eight? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? This one is a reflection. Questions? All right. Well, I think we're on to nine. 9 says write a function for the indicated transformation. Um, y equals 5 to the x minus 2 vertically stretched. Vertically stretched by a factor of 3. Vertically stretched means our a value is going to have to equal 3. Well, we don't have an a value, so we're just going to plug in an a value and that's it. So we should write y equals 3 times 5 to the x minus 2. Anybody have that one? Sweet. 
Okay. Good. Number 10 says let's translate it up 8 units. So number 10, we should add y equals 7 times 2 to the x up 8. I think it makes sense that we add 8, but where do we add 8? On the side or up by the x? On the side. Okay. If we add 8 over here, that's right. If we were to have added 8 up here, that would translate the thing which way? To the left 8. But down here translates it up 8. Good? Okay. Hmm. Well, I kind of like to take an intermission. And in this intermission, maybe we could play a quick game of um, that fill-in-the-blank game. So this is a person. This is a person I was thinking about this morning. How about, anybody got a letter? I heard an A. Uh, there's no A in this person's name. An O? An S? It's a person. Another letter? A P or a T? A D? T like Tom? Sorry, there's no T in this person's name. A what? Like dog? Okay. What do we got? S N double O P to the D O double jizzle. To the D O double jizzle. All right, because you, you got to spell that too, because it's not G, it's jizzle or gizzle. I don't even know. I better stop while I'm ahead. I'm sorry. I was thinking about rap songs this morning. I was thinking about rap songs this morning. So, Speaking of music, you all know how many musicians it takes to screw in a light bulb, don't you? A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Oh, that was really bad. That was lame. Come on now. While we're on the, the, the light bulb joke, how many dancers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Five, six, seven, eight. All right. No, no, enough of those. Okay. Uh, I don't like the directions on number 11. I think on your worksheet, did I change the directions on your worksheet? Did I cut them off? Yeah. I, I whited out some of the directions because the, the original worksheet that I used said use the, uh, it says use the graph of. Well, I cut that out because I, I don't know. I just don't like the directions. So your worksheet didn't even say use the graph of. Your worksheet just said evaluate each expression. Now, if you didn't have a scientific calculator, this is probably kind of difficult to do, isn't it? Um, and I really wish that I had a webcam that I could use. Notice I say that I could use on my laptop. My laptop has a webcam. Do you think the school would, would give us a laptop and, and let us use all the features that the laptop has? No, because that wouldn't make any sense at all. Like the fingerprint scanner to keep anybody else from logging into it. Anyway, I, I'm not good at sarcasm. Um, so you'd need some kind of scientific calculator. Now, um, if you take your cell phone's calculator and turn it sideways, does it have an E on it? And I, go ahead, take out your phones. I know I, I, I was giving people heck for being on their phones, but take out your phone. Go to your phone's calculator for a minute. And if your calculator doesn't have an E button, you could turn it up. I said turn up. Uh, you, could, you could turn up your calculator. Mine has an E button. So E, and mine has an exponent button, E to the power of 3, 
Anybody got it to uh, four decimal places? What do we got? 20.0855. Good. Okay. And then e to the power one half. One point six four eight seven. Good. One point six four eight seven. One point six four eight seven. Now e to the negative fourth isn't going to be negative, but it is going to be a decimal. It's going to be point zero something. Zero point zero one eight three. Everybody agree with that, with the rounding and everything? E to the power, E to the power, negative four. I'm just checking one more time on my phone. Well, to the negative four, to the negative four. Yeah, I like it. Um, good. We're almost done, aren't we? We're going to be done with like 20 minutes of class left. I don't know what we're going to do the rest of the time. Okay, uh, the last three items up for bid simply asks you to identify the meaning, the meaning of the following variables. So the P, it's Mr. Dobrin. It's the principal. Now, if you wanted to put that into terms that everybody on the planet understands, there's another thing we could say. It's the amount that is what? Initially invested. It's the initial investment amount, okay? To be real clear about it. It's how much of something we begin with. R is the interest rate, awesome. R is the interest, the interest rate. And T, time in time in years. So I think it would be prudent at this juncture, to quote George W. Bush, to, to go through what's going to be expected of you on the quiz on Monday. Because let's face it, you're going to take it, you're going to want to know what's on it. So here we go. First five questions on Monday's quiz. Growth or decay and give the rate. As each function, growth or decay and give the rate. Y equals 2 to the X times 1 eighth. Y equals 2 times 1 eighth to the X. Y equals 5 to the X. Y equals 3 eighths times 8 thirds to the X. I think this will be enough to get the idea. So remember, the B value is that thingy, and I, I, I know thingy is a, a silly word to use, but it's, it's whatever item has a power of X on it. That's the B value, right? And that's what we're looking at to determine if these are growth or decay. Notice all of them have positive A values because it doesn't even make sense to talk about growth or decay if the A is negative. So I'm not going to pull that noise trick on you on the quiz on Monday, I don't think. Um, so they all are either growth or decay. So let me just go ahead and clone this. I'll use green, a green G for growth. Set that up to infinitely clone. And a red D for decay. And so what do we think about the first one, growth or decay? Definitely growth. What do we think about Y equals 2 times 1 eighth to the X? That one's decay, good. What do we think about Y equals 5 to the X? Growth. And what do we think about Y equals 3 eighths times 8 thirds to the X. That one's also growth. So far, so good. Well, here's where things start to go awry. If you missed it the first time around, you might want to make note of it this time around. If we're talking about growth, if we're talking about growth, the rate can be calculated by taking 100 times B minus 1 changing that to a percent. If we're talking about decay, if we're talking about decay, it's similar. We take 100%, <clears throat> but we multiply by, uh, by 1 minus B this time. Okay, it's a little bit different formula. 
a little bit different formula, but that's how we calculate growth or decay rates, okay? So, um, so this one up here on the left, this one right here, what is our rate of decay, or I'm sorry, our rate of growth, then? anybody got it? What do we got? 100%, good. How'd you get 100%? Well, we take 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 times 100 is 100. 100%, good. So this one, the rate is 100%. Okay, you're going to have to do that on Monday's quiz. That's going to be like, I think each question is worth like four points, and it's two points to say if it's growth or decay, two points to say what the rate is. And I'm usually a pretty nice guy this time of year. Uh, and so even if you just put something down and it's wrong, you'll at least get half the points for putting something down, which is a lot better than putting nothing down and getting none of the points because the last three weeks of school counts. Um, okay, the next one. What's the decay rate here? This reminds me of going to Middlefield from Kinsman. And then a little more. I can't believe they don't teach geography anymore. Anybody ever drive from Kinsman to Middlefield? Clearly. Well, we're going to take 1 minus an eighth, which is uh, 7 eighths. And 7 eighths, how many times, well, does anybody know 7 eighths is decimal equivalent? It's 0.875. So anyway, we're looking at 87.5%. 87.5%. percent 87.5%. Okay. Moving right along to this next one down here. What is the growth rate there? 400%. Awesome. And then what about this last one? <laughs> Two hundred percent. Well, first of all, we need to think about what the heck eight and eight thirds is. Eight thirds is really two and two thirds, right? And what are we doing? We're taking two and two thirds minus one times a hundred percent. That one would be 166 and two thirds percent, right? The ones on the test aren't going to be quite as bad as that last one, but there, there are going to be five, four or five of those. I think five. There's 20 points of the of the quiz on Monday. Okay. The next section um, talks about anim animals. Animals. In 20. 14 there were in 2014 there were um, 350,000 of some kind of animal we can make it anything we want what kind of animals do we like pigs okay um, we can't talk about wild pigs though some kind of rare pig so let's give it a special name give me guinea pigs or Jimmy, did you say Jimmy Pigs? Okay, I like that, Jimmy Pigs. That's good, because they're a lot bigger than guinea pigs. <clears throat> I can picture a Jimmy Pig. Okay, um, they are declining at a rate of 3.7% per year. And there's going to be like two or three different animals on the quiz. So you're really going to have to do some, a little bit of work on this. Question A here, we're going to ask how many how many Jimmy pigs? How many Jimmy pigs will be left in the year 2020? Question mark. Question B, we might ask, how many Jimmy Pigs might be left in 2022? 
question mark. And question C here, and I think there's five or six questions. I think this gets us through ten. I think there are five questions on the on the quiz on Monday, if I remember right. Um, this might ask when will uh, less than when will less than one hundred thousand Jimmy pigs remain? Jimmy pigs remain. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear at this juncture that that we're going to have to know something about writing a model, that we're going to have to know something about time, and we're going to have to evaluate a model, right? So that y equals a times b, no, Th this, this thing, y equals a times 1 plus or minus r to the t is going to come into play, isn't it? Do we know our a value? Our A value is 350,000, so we're going to have Y equals 350,000 times. Now here is where the proverbial, ball, the proverbial ball gets dropped. Is it 1 plus or is it 1 minus? How do we know it's minus? Because they're declining. So it's going to be 1 minus. 1 minus the rate. 1 minus 3.7%. I don't trust myself to do that math calculation. So maybe I'm going to use my TI Inspire to find that B value. That's going to take a minute to load. While that's taking a minute to load, did anybody hear about the way that this one girl arrived at prom? You know how there's like epic marriage proposals and epic prom arrivals? This one girl in Chicago arrived to prom in the back of a bambulance. Ambulance, sorry. In the, in the back of a bambulance. So the squad pulls up to the prom entry. EMTs, air quote, EMTs, get out, open the doors, wheel her out of the back of the, the squad on the gurney, and her prom date kisses her and brings her air quotes back to life I think that beats a helicopter out in Iowa everybody goes to prom on tractors now that's Iowa I'm not going to talk about any other geographically close towns to us like Wyndham or anything like that that wouldn't be fair 350,000 uh, times. Oh, uh, times B, times B to the to the T. Okay, so I got a couple problems here. I don't know what my B is yet. I said my B is 1 minus 3.7%, right? I'm going to urge you to, to take a minute on the quiz and carefully on each different animal part label these with the correct B value. If you don't, you're going to miss these questions horribly. Okay, um, So the B value in this, with these Jimmy pigs, with these Jimmy pigs, the B value that we're going to use is 0 0.963. Okay, So 0 0.963. Um, the model would have a T in it, but question A doesn't ask us for a model, does it? None of the questions on the quiz are going to ask you for a model. They're just going to ask you how many Jimmy pigs are left. Um, do I still want the model? That's that's a terrific question. I I honestly am not 100% concerned about the model, but if you're not sure about your calculations, I would really, really love to see that expression. Everybody understand what I'm saying here? I'd really love to see that expression. Um, so, so far we're on pace to get this right. Um, all we got to do now is figure out for part A what, what we need to plug in for T. Six. 2014 is when time equals zero. So 15 is one, 16 is two, 17 is three, 18 is four, 19 is five, and yeah, 2020 is a six. Good job. So we plug in a six. And so now we could go back up here and we get this 350,000 times 0.963 to the sixth power. Okay. How should we round this? Because we have almost three eighths of a Jimmy pig. Yeah. 
cut it off. You're right. Yeah, we just chop off round. So it's going to be 279,142. 279,000. 279,000. So the answer here is 279,000. 279,142 Jimmy Pigs. Okay. Now, here's, I think, what happens. Sometimes people rush. And for the next one, they won't show me their expression. And the next one, they might just plug in a different value. They might plug in 10 here. Okay? And that might give me the wrong answer because they plugged in the wrong thing. What should we be plugging in here? Is it 8? Okay. So we should be plugging in 8 here. And that would give us 258,800. Oh, we have 98% of a Jimmy pig. Were, were you going to count that? What did we say two weeks ago? Chop off rounding if it's inanimate objects. Other textbooks disagree with me. But what if that Jimmy pig, the only thing missing from that Jimmy pig is its brain? then it's dead, right? We don't know what part's missing. So anytime we have an inanimate object, if we don't have the whole thing, I prefer chop off rounding. Other mathematicians might disagree with me on that. But I would appreciate if we don't have a whole one, we don't know what part's missing. And if it's its left ventricle, then it's not getting blood. And it's dead. And it's not a Jimmy pig. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to sound cruel about it, but that's the truth. So chop off rounding is you just take the decimal portion and just wipe that away. Okay, great question. So 258, 867. 258, 867. 258, 258, 860. Now I know what would happen here. Somebody would put an 868. And they wouldn't put their expression. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take off four points on their quiz. But that's not fair. Well, first of all, you didn't show me the expression you punched in. Second of all, you didn't pay attention when we talked about rounding. So I'd like to see this 350,000 times 0.963 to the, did we say 8? Okay, to the 8th. And if you had that and you had the 868, I'm only going to take off one point because it's close. And I know you're like, but dude, you took off four points if you don't show the expression. Yeah, I'd take off four points if you don't show the expression. So show the expression, round the right way. Okay. Um, that last one, anybody have any idea what we could do? using our TI Inspire to solve this? Yes. Yes, we're going to end solve it. So on this, we're just going to go ahead and end solve. Not end solve, nay. End solve. So our equation is going to be 100,000. Make sure you get enough zeros. Equals 350,000 times 0.963 to the power T comma t whoop there it is in 33 years so you can answer this question a few different ways you could say in 33 years or 33 years from 2014 or in the year 2047 do you see the different ways you could answer that so 33 years from 2014 if you if you don't put the from 2014 if you just say 33 years from when it's 33 years from 2014 Got him? Okay. Um, well, that's the first page of, of Monday's quiz. Back to the calculator real quick? Sure. Okay. So if I had to guess what else would be on it, I would say that there's probably going to be some E stuff on it. And some of the E stuff the calculator might not do. Like simplify simplify 3e to the 7th over 21e to the 15th. Oh. E is a number, but it also kind of behaves as if it's a variable. Now, if you give me a decimal answer for this, I'm probably going to mark it red. Simplifying and evaluating are two different things. Simplifying means get the algebraic expression into reduced form or lowest terms. So let's look at this for a second. We have two coefficients, 3 and 21, that can be reduced, eh? A magical tractor turns into a field. A 3 and a 21 are both divisible by 3. The 3 becomes a 
a one which doesn't even need to be written up top, unless maybe it's to hold the place. Could be. And then in the bottom, the 21 turns into a, a 7. So what we've really got here is 1e e to the 7th over 7e e to the 15th. Now, you know those cheesy videos I showed you this year? I didn't show you this one. It was really poorly scripted, and I just couldn't stand the acting. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll show it to you one day. But there's this boy on there. I call him a boy because he's probably about 20. Maybe he's a man. Anyway, he says, need a hand? Or no, yeah, need a hand? Expand. He sounds kind of like, like the guy from, oh, what's that show where those two good-looking guys drive around in that cool car? Somebody help me out. Huh? Supernatural, yeah. Like He sounds like the one guy from... Like the better looking guy from Super, well, I don't know which one you think is better looking or not, but the, the the younger guy on Supernatural, the shorter one, he was Cody. He was Cody in some other TV show. I don't know his name. But anyway, the guy sounds like him, and he says, need a hand? Expand. What I'm getting at here, what I'm getting at here is, is if we were to take this and rewrite it this way, one e e e e e e e over seven. E, 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 E. I think this would help us understand what's happening here, right? Remember your exponent rules? You subtract the exponents because seven of these E's will cancel out seven of these E's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So what's left? In the denominator, in the denominator we would have 7e to the 8th, right? And something has to hold the place in the numerator, a 1. Okay, so there will be a couple of questions like that on the a quiz, I'm pretty sure. Uh, there, there might be another one like, uh, you know, simplify e to the 4th over e to the negative 2nd. That would be e to the, uh, e to the, oh, That would be e to the, um, we subtract the exponents, that would be e to the 4 minus minus 2. That would be e to the 6, right? Okay, so look out for a couple of those. That's it. That's all I got. The rest of the quiz I think we covered in the homework. It's been real. It's been fun. Uh, make good choices tonight at prom. I'll see you next time. Yeah, quick question. You're allowed to use your notes on Monday's quiz. Another question. The final answer for the e to the 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 e with all, the one over seven e to the eighth. That would be it. If I asked you to evaluate it, then I'd be looking for a decimal. Okay. Shout out to uh, anybody at home watching this. A shout out to anyone with the last name of Minor, because if somebody put a piano in a mine shaft, there would be a flat minor. That's a bad joke. I shouldn't tell that one. Shout out to the future, Mr. Minnick. Shout out to uh, everybody else. Have a great day. See you. Good.